you know, people can imitate me on how I, on what I, why, I, how I breed my dogs, but you can't imitate the love and passion that I have for this. So you may see what I do, you try to imitate it, but if you don't have the same love and passion I have for this, you'll never be the same. Butler Kennel Rock Wallers, man. Today we are going to start off with part two. Part two. Everyone seems to like part one and what to expect when becoming a breeder or owning a rock waller or dog in general, you know what I mean? So, but mostly we're going to focus on trying to become a breeder, right? Like I said, we aren't going to quit. Sorry, apologize. First thing and foremost is if you haven't yet, welcome to the channel. Number one, welcome to the channel. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button, the like button, and let me know what you think about what we discussed today on this post, right? Shout out, um, one of the biggest thing is shouting out uh, where you guys are watching my videos from. I like to know that, so let me know where you guys are at right now watching my videos, what state you're in, right? Um, and I'm going to do my best to comment on everybody's photo on this time here. This is going to be my best tomorrow try to comment a lot more. Well, sometimes I'm not really commenting. You see me liking your posts and everything else about reading it. So I am reading your guys' posts. That's someone else. I don't pay somebody to go on my page and type. That's me. All right? So, hit the like, subscribe button, all that kind of stuff or whatever. Second thing is I have my seatbelt on. You know, the last video, I didn't have my seatbelt on. You guys have been getting on me about it. You want my safety, my health, and I appreciate that. So, today we got Tessa. You guys never seen Tessa before. Right, Tessa? But well, we got Tessa. Tessa's been here for a minute with us. Uh, um, Tessa's imported from Russia. She wasn't this big. <laughs> she was a puppy. She still is a puppy. Uh, but, uh, I don't know. In all honesty, you guys, when I talk about this, is off the head. This is not something that's pre written down, not got different subjects. Um, we're actually on the way to the vet. Not the VA, sorry, the VA. Um, you know, for the veterans and hospital or whatever. Got to get some stuff like that. So while I was doing that, just came out of mind. So, you know what? Let me make the part two right now. So, this isn't something scripted or anything else. Right, Mama? Right. So, she decided to come with me today. Well, brought her today with me. Get her some, uh, it's too hot to be in the back. So, uh, we're doing some ride alongs and some discussion. Last time, that was Sting, you guys. That was Sting. You were right. That was Sting. This one here is Tessa, a female pup, um, as well. Right, mama. Right. <laughs> get you in there, girl. But anyway, let's just, let's just get started with what you guys came to see, right? What are some, let's go with, I'm gonna find out like maybe three, four subjects to go over. One of the biggest things I'm gonna go over is, um, that's really hitting a lot is, you know, we to backtrack a little bit. We talked about, you know, people when you're talking about getting starting a channel and I mean starting your breathing program. Uh, you got people gonna hate on you. You might have people that's gonna want you to do things their way and all that kind of stuff. And uh, the word German Americans and all that stuff. So let's we gonna get down a little bit more into depth about what to really expect when you're doing starting a breeding program. And the number one thing is, of course, doing your research, understanding what you're looking up for. What do you, what, why do you want to do, why do you want to breed? That's the first question you got to ask yourself. Why do you want to breed? If the first answer to your question is money, don't breed. Because I promise you, number one is you're going to lose a lot of money. You're going to lose a lot of money at first. So if you're really telling yourself, oh, I'm going to get this dog, and I'm going to put it together, and I'm going to get some puppies, I'm going to make a lot of money, and I'm going to do it that way, and you're going to lose a lot of money. I promise you. Now, you may say, Tony, how is that? You seem to be doing well with your dogs and all that stuff there. 
and you know, XYZ. I see a lot of breeders on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram selling puppies. They're making a lot of money. I want to join that club of money and it's out there to make. Yes and no. There are, you can become successful. Every mechanic shop isn't making money. Every restaurant doesn't make money. They might have good food and everything else. Location, the way they present themselves, the way they push it out there, uh, advertise, and all that stuff makes a difference on, you know, success or not success, location, who you are, you know, a lot of different things, not just that. But the main thing is, I like to think is quality. This is the number one thing people would do when they want to start a breeding program, right? The number one thing people do is they start off with the whole, I'm going to go buy a small, cheap looking dog. Maybe then I'll breed it with a nice quality dog, sell some puppies, and then, or get two cheap dogs, sell some puppies, and I'm going to use that money from the cheap puppies that I earn and buy some quality dogs. The dumbest thing ever in the world, right? Not good. Because the first thing you want to do is better the breed, better the breed, better the breed. Y'all see that little tail there? I hate tails. That's not, that's not a subject we're going to get at. Not a subject we're going to get at later, but I'll tell you about that. Um, but people always think money is, you know, you get into, if you're getting into it for the money, man, I promise you, you're going to be disappointed. I promise you. Sometimes you see breeders that have a lot and doing big things and doing that. They got maybe family name, generation that have been in this thing for a long time. A lot of breeders don't show you the losses, you know what I mean? Because they don't want them to come across as like, oh, they're failing. Any successful breeder have had losses. And if they tell you they haven't had losses, I promise you they're lying or they're not successful enough, you know what I mean? So you're going to take a loss. Like you have to, you just because in part of you, you can't start a kennel off winning because you gotta invest into the dogs. You're gonna buy quality dogs, and quality dogs aren't cheap. You're not gonna buy a quality, well, take that back. It's really uncommon to buy quality dogs for cheap, okay? It's really uncommon. I said you can't, because there's gonna be someone like, oh, I paid 500 for my dog, and my dog is beautiful and loving and everything else. Yeah, okay. Until you see, like, with the 300 Chrysler, everybody thought they had a, a Bentley until a real Bentley pulled up next to a 300 Chrysler and it don't look nothing like it, okay? So, nothing wrong with loving on your dog and thinking your dog is quality and thinking you have this and have that. Nothing's wrong with that. If you love your dog, love it. Everybody has a different purpose in what they're breeding for. Some people are just breeding because they say, hey, I got a male and a female. I just love dogs and I want someone else to enjoy this love of dogs and what they have. That's that person next person. I have a dog that I'm breeding because I want to specifically better the breed and I think this dog is making it better and I want to make it better. You have that person. Next person is me. Man, I see a lot of money into the dogs. I'm just going to try to breed because somebody else is somebody else is telling me I can make a lot of money. You have that person. You got the next person that tells you, hey man, I'm trying to breed because I want to do show dogs and I really love this breed and I want to see this thing really just magnify most and all that kind of stuff. You have different groups of people on why they breed. Same breed, different reasons. And nothing is wrong, everybody's reason is for their own. I'm not here to tell anybody what reason that should be. And I don't push my love of why I do it onto someone else. You know, people can imitate me on how I, on what I, why, how I breed my dogs, but you can't imitate the love and passion that I have for this. So you may see what I do, you try to imitate it, but if you don't have the same love and passion I have for this, you'll never be the same, right? That's that. So, to get the first subject narrated down is, if you're gonna do it for money, don't do it at all. And you're gonna take losses because you have to invest correctly before you could even get to that next level. You can't, you can't want Ferrari ride the way a Ferrari drives but you want to use uh, a Pinto parts on your car. You're not going to get the same results because you can't buy cheap parts looking for the same expensive ride that you get in Mercedes and all these kind of stuff as well, right? Hope that makes sense, that analogy. If anybody's not a car person, that's a car analogy. Basically, you can't use unquality stuff and want to get the same quality out of the unquality parts or whatever. So, right, girl. Number two time 
time, 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 time. If you're expecting to be a breeder or you're thinking about breeding, take into consideration. I see it all the time. You see so many breeders, you'll never see mine, but you see so many breeders pit up there. Oh, we're gonna let this dog go because of X, Y, Z. We wanna give it to a good home now because we really wasn't expecting this much work and all this stuff. You're gonna be a lot of work before you get this dog. Understand that breeding, I have sacrificed so many time, vacation, uh, just being out with friends and doing things because of this little joker right now, specifically just her, but breeding. Number one, you have dogs, you have puppies. You can't just go on vacation when you're by yourself doing this here back and forth. There is no, okay, friends are going out this weekend, you got puppies on the ground, you got little ones, everyone's going on family reunion trips or whatever. You may, now you can't go that way because you got little puppies on the ground. So, but some people are gonna say, I don't care, I'm still going on my vacation, come back, puppies are passed away or not taken care of right and all that kind of stuff. And that's kind of a sacrifice that a lot of people don't see that breeders make on a daily basis. Like there was one time, I didn't even go on vacation for like five years, like no vacation. I didn't even go anywhere. I had the money to go and do things, but because of the passion that goes into these dogs, I wasn't able to actually go out and enjoy the vacation time or leave the house and do things because I was with the dogs all the time. You know what I mean? Um, my, my little ones wanted to go out and do things I couldn't. You know, late nights, you know, when you're, when the sacrifice of time is just not, you guys see the video of the quick 20 second, 20 minute video or 10 minute video of puppies playing around in the grass and you know, oh, he had the beautiful puppies and you hit the, and when the, when the video ends, you think that's it. When that video ends, Life is just really getting started for the breeders you see on the channel. Watching my channel, life just got started because once that video ends, it's now time for work to really be done. You know what I mean? I can't do but so much work when I have a video in front of me. So I show a piece of it. So guess what I'm really saying is just the fact that there's so much more that goes on behind closed doors that you guys don't understand. And I'm trying to slowly uh, put that into it where you guys can see it. So you have to have time. Like, I know there's some breeders that work a full-time job and then they leave that job and work for someone else and they leave that job and they come and breed and back and forth or whatever. Me, this is what I do 100% of the world. I do, this is, I don't work for anybody else. I work for myself, put it like that. Because any other job I have is all my job that I've created for myself that I've done. It's a lot of work even when you do it that way. So it's a lot of attention to detail, timing for these dogs. And sometimes I have to take away from the other jobs because I know these dogs need time. They're your kids. These, these are like kids. You can't see them as dogs just locked up in cages and all. They're dogs, they're all right. They are dogs, but they have feelings, emotions, and a part of the family. You're not gonna have your kid out there and just like, whatever, have a baby or whatever. Just let me see what you got. You know what I mean? So. What you invest into them is what you get back out. It's a lot, 90% of what I do, people will never see, you know, but I'm not doing it for the public. I'm doing it because I have love for these dogs. I have, you know, you see the results of it. Like you see people talking about how cleanliness the shops are, how cleanliness the kennels are, how much work I can see it. You don't actually see me doing the work because it's the late nights and two o'clock in the morning when they're having puppies and cleaning up and washing and pressure washing and cleaning and sanitizing and getting back up and getting the puppies and going back and forth to the vet because one is sick and this is happening, spending more money and going here and getting back and forth and then you're exhausted, you're tired and then dealing with phone calls and all that kind of stuff or whatever. I'm grateful for it, I'm blessed for it because this is what I asked for, I asked God for it and I was blessed because of it. And you know, um, they say, be careful what you ask for, you know, because you'll get it. Um, and I'm very blessed with what I do have, and I'm very grateful for it. But I'm still a human being, I'm one, I'm one person, so it's a lot of work that goes into it, dealing with everybody, and still having that attitude of every day you get up and you feel blessed because of what you're doing is something you love to do. But you still get tired, two o'clock in the morning, and these dogs that have puppies at the worst time ever for you, inconvenience. You want to go out someplace, and you're like, oh, she's too close to having these puppies. I can't go out right now because. You know, Tessa might be hit. Nah, not her, but this is an example because she's not ready to have puppies. 
Destin's ready to have puppies or whatever, then boom. You know, you can't go out because you don't want to miss out. Think in your eye, man. You know, in your eye and stuff. What's up, mom? Yeah, you heard me call your name? Okay. So, man, you don't get me. Okay, look, let's get. You, here's my rag. Let's use my rag. Uh, man. Hey, come on, man. You gonna blow your nose all over it? Stop it. Oh, boogery nose. Anyway, this is. See? Like your little kids. Blow her, blow her little nose on you and stuff. Oh, mucus butt. Anyway, let me see. Yeah. Test. Test. Anyway, I got time for you, Tessie. We are talking about. Oh, uh oh. Yep. See? Oh, I think I'm going to fall my little camera frame. Get off me. Get off me, baby girl. Anyway, sorry. You know, I get a little distracted. Let me put this back on me. This has to think this is all about her. It's not. Maybe it is about her. Maybe it's not about me. I got it wrong. But, but so timing is a very big thing. If we get that, you understand that. I guess I made that point kind of clear a little bit. That you got to spend, you got to have time. And you gotta have sacrifices. And you're not gonna just go have breeding and just leave the town when you want to. Um, and, and, and also, it depends on how big you wanna be too. You know, not everybody's wanting to have 20 dogs in the kennels and one or two dogs is where you're limited. Know your limitations of what you want. Understanding of how big you wanna go and, you know, always start off small. Don't just try to start off and have the biggest kennel in the world because people don't understand the time that goes into this thing here that you have to have. So, sacrifice and time is the second point that I made. I hope that really, I know I kinda. Extended that long, but I'm trying to make it break it down for those that's the first time really taking notes right now. Um, you know, what's the third subject we're going to talk about? What's the third subject? Hey, training. Let's go with training, right? Three training. You're not going to just have a bunch of dogs in your yard and you're just like, hey, yeah, they're dogs, they know, get along together, whatever the case is. These dogs require training, like these guys here require training. I'm telling you. Right, you have to put time into these dogs. These are not a little winnacle that we're coming out. You know, training is one of the biggest things that you have to you have to be able to put into it. You know what I mean? This isn't something that. Should I see? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, training goes into your dogs. Training starts up at a very, very young age. So, training goes at a very, very young age. Um, I'm sorry, you guys. Got a little bit of ADD. <laughs> Driving, blame her in. Focus. Okay, so... Focus. Um, training, you you need to have a lot of training when it comes to your dogs, man, and time to give it training. Um, a lot of times people just want to ask me, hey, do you train so I can be easy to drop it off for you and train the dogs to be done? Yes, you can drop it off someone to have your dog trained, but you really need to actually sit down, get your dog, and spend time with it. And that goes back to the last one about time. Because these dogs aren't hard to train, they just need that attention and time for those dogs. Now, people ask me sometimes, you got all those dogs, how do you train your dogs back and forth, what are the cases? A lot of times, people have called me, you heard me on the phone, the dogs in the background, I'm always working with them, it's, it's oh. What you do with your dogs, you can kind of see, you know what I mean? You're not going to pretend like, oh, if this dog had no training at all, it'd be hopping around, scratching up this here, don't do this here, whatever. Your dog, you can see attention to certain dogs. When people show their dogs, you can see how I take my dogs out, how they perform, how they react, because that's time invested to it. These do do you know what I mean? these aren't dogs that are just gonna come out of nowhere like, oh, behave, I'm gonna sit right here and just be patient and driving. I take this dog all the time for a drive. She loves it. She, this one here specifically, loves it. I have some dogs that are not really too much keen on the car drives, but they love to be out and about. Some dogs can't stand being inside the truck, but love to be in the back. Just love that cold air on them. That cool air, the breeze, and all that kind of stuff. But to me, 
it's too hot outside right now. I'm not even gonna even pretend to even pick my dog outside. Let me see how hot it is. I don't even know how hot it is right now. It is, it's 100 degrees outside right now. I'll be a fool letting my dogs outside. Just hot direct sun running on them. But training your dog and finding the right key time to train your dog and train your dog for what you want. Some people train their dogs for protective training. Some people protect it. Some of the people with dogs become like they want just a family pet, but have a dog that's just gonna naturally be aggressive when someone comes. Some dogs I realize don't need the extensive of training, just like every human being. Everybody's different on how they train and what the purpose of what they need. Some people can fight and never took fighting lessons at all. Some people need to go to school and learn how to fight because they get beat up every time. Not every Rockwaller is is born and bred to do the same thing. That's why when you have a dog, your dog is bred specifically to what you're looking for. Every bloodline in these dogs are different. You see what I'm saying? What? What? I'm up in your face and stuff, man. What the hell? So, that's the, that's the big thing there, honestly. It's just, honestly, understanding that, you know, what you want to do with your dog. If you have training, take your dog. If you know you don't have the time for the dogs and all that stuff, take it to a professional. Have them show you. One of the best things you can do is sh they show you and they show you how they're training the dog so they take the dog back home. You can keep up the same exact thing um, and going forth with the dog or whatever, right? Um, so make sure you have time with the dog. And it doesn't always require professional training. It just takes that love, time, and patience with your dog. Spend some time with your dog. Don't just think that People go home from work all the time and they come back home for 10 minutes and they walk through the door the dog's so excited to see them and they're thinking like, oh yeah, I spent 10 minutes with my dog and that's it. 10 minutes is not enough time for a dog, man. Spend that time in love with that dog because most times dogs react of how you are and if that dog understands you and you spend time with it, man, you'll be so surprised that you don't even need to do a lot of that extensive training with your dog because your dog's going to be in tune of how you live your life. You know, if you're spending every day doing this with the dog and doing that, your dog becomes in tune with you and sick of how you respond. It responds with you nicely. So, but it's so much ways into telling you about training and all that kind of stuff. But um, three subjects, that's my three. Um, you know, you want to invest money. Um, what to expect when you're investing into the money, the time, uh, vacations, and all that kind of stuff, and training. That's my three subjects for the day. I uh, hope it's been kind of educational for you guys to understand what it is, uh, what goes into it. It's so much more, but I don't want to kill you guys and bore you guys with too much all at one time. I hope you guys been blessed. I hope you guys got an understanding of this and treat each other right and be blessed, man. You know what I mean? But ultimately, before anything else, do it because you love it. You know what I mean? Make sure you breed because you love the breed and you love what you're doing. You're not just rock wild for any dog or anything you do in life. Be the best at what you can be. Remember that. Um, and without further ado, we are out. Be blessed. Deuces.